Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be discussing the VOR test. The VOR test is part of the ocular motor exam, and it's generally performed right before the head thrust or head impulse test. And the VOR test assesses for whether or not the vestibulo-ocular reflex is intact. And if you want more information on the VOR, we cover that in another video. But understand that if the VOR is not intact, it can cause severe dizziness. And we want to make sure it's intact before we proceed with the head impulse test. Because in order to interpret the head impulse test, we need to make sure that the VOR is intact. Otherwise, that test is not valid. So after you do this test, we'll proceed to the head impulse test, which we will be covering in the next video. So to perform the VOR test, the patient will be positioned in sitting, as you see here in the video clip. And the patient is instructed to maintain gaze fixation on the PT's nose throughout the entire test. Now, realistically, it can be my nose, it can be one of my eyes, it can be between my eyes, as long as it is a fixed point, okay? And then the PT will slowly rotate the patient's head between negative 30 degrees and positive 30 degrees, so 30 degrees left, 30 degrees right, while monitoring the patient's eyes, okay? And I don't have it written here, but you also wanna maintain a slight chin tuck position while you're doing that rotation, okay? Uh, now, what we're assessing for here is the vestibulo-ocular reflex, the VOR. So if I am gonna maintain my gaze on the camera here and I rotate my head right, there should be a movement of my eyes to the left to maintain gaze fixation. As I rotate my head left, the opposite should happen. My eyes should rotate right to maintain gaze fixation on the camera, okay? Now, if the VOR is not intact, as you rotate the patient's head one way, their eyes may not be able to, to keep on that target, whether it's your nose or your eye or, or whatnot, okay? So whether or not they're able to track the target tells you whether or not the VOR is intact. And you would never proceed to the head impulse test if the VOR is not intact. If the VOR is not intact, there's no reason to perform the head impulse test, okay? So it's important to assess for this before you do that. So let's take a look at the test right here. So I slowly rotate her head in that slight chin tuck position, and her eyes are able to clearly maintain focus on my nose there. Okay, so in this case, her VOR is intact. Now, obviously, if there was any inability for the patient's eyes to maintain focus on the PT's nose, well, that would be a positive test, and that would indicate that the VOR is not intact. But there is another case for a positive test, and that is when they report that your nose, or whatever the target is, blurs or doubles during the test. What does that look like? Well, before the test, statically, your nose is clear. You start rotating their head, and their eyes appear to be maintaining focus on your nose, but they report that your nose blurs or doubles. The vast majority of patients with dizziness, even those with a hypofunction, even if you're moving the head this slow, they're going to be able to maintain focus on the eye. Their VOR is gonna be intact most likely, and that nose or target is not going to blur or double. It's gonna maintain clarity because you're not moving very fast. So if it does blur or double, assuming the VOR is intact, that implies that they have very poor gaze stability. And if your gaze stability is that impaired, that can really cause dizziness. That can be a real problem. And so if that's the case, they have impaired gaze stability, you need to do gaze stabilization exercises. But if their gaze stability is impaired even at this speed of this test, the VOR times one will probably be too much for them. So you need to even take it down a step to the regression, which is called gaze shifting. Sometimes that's used as a substitution for certain uh, conditions, but it can also be used as a regression for the VOR times one. And we cover that in a separate video. So make sure to take a look at that. It'll be on my channel. Just search for it, gaze shifting. And then reproduction of any symptoms consistent with dizziness. So dizziness itself, nausea, headache, lightheadedness, etc. Those are definitely abnormal. If you're doing this test in someone with an intact, healthy vestibular system, that should be completely asymptomatic. There's no reason that should cause any symptoms. So if it does, that warrants further investigation, okay? 
So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the VOR test. In the next video, we're gonna be looking at the head thrust or head impulse test, which you always do immediately after this one. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you for watching this video.